Hello, today we're taking a look at the Shark Force 140 millimeter class vent. Let's get right into it. So first, a little bit of cross comparison against other fans. We got the other Shark Forces, the Tough Fan 14s, because I thought it was kind of applicable to kind of compare it against that, as well as a couple of Noctua fans. You can see we're ranked at time of testing this video. If you're looking for uh, most recent ranking information, I do have uh, from August a best of videos, a three-part series, so you can always reference that. A little bit of spec of information on the Shark Force 140 and flow dynamic varying, the RPM, the CFM, millimeters of H2. I do my own testing, so we'll come. First test is the case simulation test. This can be looked at a couple of different ways, where it's how good is this fan at focusing its airflow, but for you, the viewer, it's how good is this fan in different types of computer cases. The first is the six inch mark. That would be like an ITX case. So a front to back airflow into an air cooler. All of these testing assumes that you have an air cooler. Uh, the six inch mark is also representative of a short throw distance. That would be uh, having a fan in the bottom of your computer case blowing air up into your GPU or an inverted case blowing down into your GPU, something along those lines. The nine inch mark is representative of your compact towers something that would be able to hold 220 millimeter class fans, basically a standard ATX motherboard, no extra space. So an HTP, T, HTPC, media center PC, something like that. Then we got the 11 inch mark. That would be your standard mid tower cases, 320 millimeter class fans, or a standard 360 AIO in terms of the length capacity in it. And then the 14.5 inch mark would be your large tower, something like the Fractal Design Torn. 340 millimeter class fans would be that sizing. Now we need something to compare against to create a general baseline of a good, not good fan. So I have a control fan based three parts A12X5 to one part A14, creating a blended 100 in 30 millimeter class fan, as I like to call it. And well, it does really quite well. Now at a smaller computer cases, 140s tend to not do as well as 120s, but at bigger cases, they tend to do a lot better. And we see that the short force is doing excellent job in mid and large tower cases. How about at 100%? Wow. Well, it's it's crushing it. At similar RPMs, although albeit the Shark Force is almost 10 decibels noisier, so that's almost twice as loud as my control fan, but it's moving a lot of air. So if you can put up with the noise, it might be worthwhile. So noise normalized distance from the fan versus airspeed across sub Subselection of fans, noise normalized results, so all of these would be generating the same noise level despite their different RPMs. The Shark Force is, well, it's towards the top at the 11 and 14.5 inch mark. There are a couple of better fans like the Silent Wings uh, Pro 4 and uh, what's this diamond? The Tough Fan 14 Pro does a little bit better than it, but it's ranking really quite well. At 100% PDOM fan signaling, well, it's really quite towards the top. There are very few fans that actually do better than it, like the Tough N14 Pro or the, uh, what's this, the Shark Force 160 is on here, and there'll be another follow-up video with that fan as well. But RPM matters, and that's why a 3000 RPM fan blows off the charts. I wanted it fine-tuned enough that you could actually see what's going on. Next, the 9-inch mark, airspeed versus decibel rating. The 9-inch mark was chosen so that on average, I would have air speeds high enough that uh, I could actually utilize the data. Because of the air speeds are too low, I can't use the data because it becomes unreliable. So the 9-inch mark gave the best chances for that. But this sort of test could be done at any of these data points. So right here, the Shark Force um, isn't the most noise efficient, especially as um, higher RPMs, so higher noise levels. It just isn't quite as efficient as other fans. So take that information for what you will. There are better choices out there, but it's it, it moves a significant amount of air, but it does it in a fairly noisy way. Next up, performance through my CPU air cooler. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. I haven't added uh, thermal testing yet because with this channel, I can't afford a test system just yet. If you would like to see this channel grow, I ask that you become a YouTube member or a Patreon. 
because that money does directly go into helping this channel. I recently acquired a radiator for testing. Again, no test system, so it's just airspeed going through it, but I have found so far that the airspeeds going through that radiator are very similar, near on identical to the airspeeds I was getting with my Noctua U12A, so I'm calling it uh, identical at this time. You know, it's not really quite identical, it's really close. Um, anyways, on the left side here, we got airspeed versus RPM. And uh, that's NS, that's supposed to be an MS. I do apologize for that typo. But we can see that the Shark Force is a more efficient blade design than my composite control fan. How about in terms of that noise efficiency? Well, at lower RPMs, lower air speeds, the Shark Force is a little bit better than my control fan, but as it begins to climb, it falls away. It's just not as noise efficient. How does it ring compared to other fans? Well, third place is a uh, pretty good place to be at time of testing. Again, for most recent data, you need to reference my uh, my best of videos. But it's doing fairly quite well in this noise normalized result. At 100%, well, it's moving a ton of air. And it's moving a little bit it's moving a little bit less air and it's noisier than the Tough Fan 14 Pro. So the Shark Force, uh, if you can put up with the noise, it kind of gets a recommendation, but if you want or more nor noise sensitive, I'd look for something a little bit better. But we'll have to look at value in a minute. So now we're on to that noise efficiency versus air speed. It does pretty well. Matter of fact, it beats out a bunch of other fans. But like the Tough N14 Pro is just significantly better than it. Heck, even the A12 by Five at its RPM range is better than it going pushing air through an air cooler. But it is better than a wide selection of other fans that I chose to compare it against in this video. Now we're to CFM testing. CFM testing is basically a scientific test. Any reviewer who says high CFM good for case airflow is lying to you because it actually matters more about airflow patterns. Where CFM matters is in a heat exchanger type methodology. So this is a custom water cool type system where you have probably more than two radiators in it where you care about volume of air move in, move out, which is what CFM is. Uh, otherwise, having a good airflow pattern inside of your case is actually more important. But I did the test to cover all my bases, so here it is, blade efficiency against my control fan. It's almost identical in terms of that noise efficiency. It's slightly better than my control fan, interestingly enough, but again, the control fan is just the NFA14. It isn't a composite fan in this test. How does it rank against other fans? Well, it does pretty well. Um, it's towards the top, so it gets a pretty good recommendation here. In terms of at 100% PDOM fan signaling, it's once again ranked towards the top in this graphs, but if you're like looking at its noise value, it's a little bit noisy for how much air it can move. So there just might be a little bit better choices out there if you're more noise sensitive. I know that I've been reading that a lot. Um, CFM versus decibel rating. Again, it, it's not bad. It's sitting in the main grouping, but depending on your sensitivity, there may be better options, but it's overall pretty good, I would say. All right, that brings us to value proposition. This is a $31.60 fan, as near as I could tell on Amazon with standard retail pricing. So value isn't raw performance, it is just performance per dollar, and this is a fairly expensive fan. And we see that it has that problem. Its value isn't that good. Its performance was actually pretty good. Its noise ranking wasn't the best, but it was pretty good but its value isn't quite there so if you're on an ultra tight budget look elsewhere but if you're not on a budget uh it's up to you to determine what fan ratios fit you the best and for leaking a look at the 11 inch mark it is pretty standard uh in newer graphs i do have these uh rank best to worst as opposed to just randomly uh bear with me as i am filling out getting out older videos, quote unquote, older videos. Um, but it's doing okay. CFM testing, again, sort of bottom middle of the pack. It's not bad, not great. Performance for the CPU air cooler, um, on the worst side of things. So they're just better values out there. So it is up to you to determine whether it's worth it or not.
That brings us to the end of the video. At the end of every video, I like to show off my raw data. This raw data does belong to me. If you want to use it for your own personal use, you may go ahead and do so, like filling out your own graphs and charts. However, if you want to use this data in any publication, written or journal, I do ask that you reference me and my channel. If you are wondering, I'm trying to figure out how to make it so viewers can have access to my raw data through subscribing to Patreon or YouTube membership. I am not an expert at that sort of thing. I am literally a mechanical engineer, not computer. <laughs> so I am trying to figure out that side. If you like the idea of what this channel is doing, I ask that you do join me as a Patreon or a YouTube member. It does go a long way in helping support me and this channel. Every little bit of money I get through that does support this channel. Right now, this channel has no sponsorships and I only get minuscule amounts of ad revenue. So the channel is not sustainable. My goal is to get this channel sustainable where it can sustain itself. So I'd like to see that. Um, but if you have fans that you want me to test in the future, leave in the comment section down below. I'll try to get around to testing them at some point. Um, other than that, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.